in chapter 4, let's study two-dimensional or multi-dimensional arrays. Sometimes it is called a matrix. First definitions. Two-dimensional array can be viewed as a special linear list. Each data element is a linear list. Let's have a look at a general two-dimensional two array consists of M rows and N columns. Uh, it can be viewed uh, as in row vector. Each row uh, is viewed as one element. Then this is a linear list with length M. Similarly, it can be viewed as in column vector. Each column can be viewed as one element. Then uh, this is a linear list uh, with n elements. Features of multidimensional array. First structure of the array is fixed or in other words cannot be modified. We cannot insert or delete an element from multidimensional array. Element has the same data type or homogeneous data element. Operations performed on array includes given a set of indices, retrieve or modify an element. We cannot perform insertion or deletion on a multidimensional array. Next, let's see sequential representation of matrix. We know computer's main memory is a kind of one-dimensional structure. When we uh, want to save or store a multi-dimensional elements into one-dimensional memory, we have first to determine storage order. For two-dimensional array, usually we have two methods. The first one is called row major order. Uh, it means elements in the first row will be stored first, and then elements in the second row, and finally elements in the last row. Uh, in this way, we can derive a formula to calculate location of elements uh, in multi-dimensional array, given its uh, row index is i and the column index is j. Similarly, we have column major order. It means the elements in the first column will be stored first, and then the second column, and finally the last column. Uh, in the same way, we can derive a formula to calculate a location for any elements in the matrix. Array-based sequential representation means define a static multi-dimensional array. We can first define element data type and then define some constants and statically declare two-dimensional or multi-dimensional array to store elements uh, in matrix. Of course, uh, we can implement dynamic multi-dimensional array. For example, uh, in dynamic two-dimensional array, usually we declare a second rank uh, pointer, uh, it points to a pointer array, and then we define number of rows and columns. Uh, to initialize a two-dimensional array, for example, a two-dimensional array with three rows and four columns, the first thing, uh, we dynamically uh, apply uh, for con address contiguous memory to hold 
three pointers. We can call a library function malloc to apply for uh, memory to hold uh, a row elements. Each element uh, is a element type pointer. So this is a pointer array and its initial address start in a base. Because uh, in each row, we have four elements. So uh, dynamically, we apply three array to hold elements in each row. We can implement uh, in this for loop. Each array has column elements and the data type of each one is element type. In this way, uh, we can define dynamic uh, two-dimensional array. Of course, in a similar way, we can implement dynamic multi-dimensional array. In chapter four, we'll spend some time on matrix compression storage. For a generous matrix uh, with M rows and N columns, totally we have M times N elements. But uh, if it is a special matrix, uh, we want to have some methods to save some storage. Let's first see symmetric matrix. Symmetric matrix is a square matrix uh, which is equal to its transpose, or in other words, elements A, I, J uh, is equal to elements A, J, I. For such a special matrix, uh, we can store elements uh, in the lower triangular part to save some memory. Uh, in the lower triangular part, totally we have half n times n plus one elements. Following the row major order for elements in the lower part, we can derive a formula to calculate, calculate uh, location uh, of each element. Uh, if row index is bigger than column index, means if it is an element in the lower triangle, we can use this formula to determine its location in one dimensional array. Otherwise, uh, if its row index is smaller than uh, column index, uh, it is an element in the upper triangle. Then by interchange uh, index i with j, uh, we can calculate its location and then directly uh, retrieve or uh, write elements to that cell. The second special matrix is triangular matrix. Triangular matrix means all the elements uh, in the upper triangle are zero or reversely. So uh, it can be comprised exactly in the same way as symmetric matrix. Following row major order, we can use this formula to calculate location of any, uh, any elements. Next special matrix is called band matrix. Uh, band matrix is a matrix whose non-zero entries are confined to a, a diagonal band. For example, this is a tri-diagonal matrix. Uh, for this kind of special matrix, following row major order, we can also derive a formula to calculate its location. 
for example, uh, if its row matrix is two and the column matrix uh, is column index is three, bring it into this formula. We can calculate its location is four. In this way, we can sum, we can save some uh, computer's memory storage. In this part, let's focus on compression of sparse matrix. First, what is a sparse matrix definition? A sparse matrix is a matrix in which most of the elements are zeros. For example, matrix M uh, has six rows and seven columns totally 42 elements, but among all the elements, we have only eight non-zero entries. So this one can be called a sparse matrix. Uh, if it is a sparse matrix, we, have, we want to save some storage by store matrix dimensions or the number of its rows and the columns and then for each non-zero element, store its row index, column index, and its value. In other words, sparse matrix M is determined by non-zero elements and then the dimension of matrix. Next, how to comprise a sparse matrix uh, with sequential representation. The first method, triple list. Triple list is also called triple array. For each non-zero element, uh, we, de uh, we declare three data items. Uh, I is row index, column index, and the value of the non-zero element. Uh, each element has three data items, so it is called a triple. Then we declare a triple array to hold all the non-zero elements. Uh, we also define variables uh, to indicate number of rows, uh, columns, and the number of non-zero elements. Uh, usually, the index uh, we use from one instead of zero. Let's see an example. Uh, in this uh, a sparse matrix, we have eight non-zero entries. So triple list totally has uh, nine elements. Uh, each one has three uh, items, a row index, column index, and non-zero uh, entries values. Usually, cell zero is unused or saved. Uh, we can also save the dimensions and the number of non-zeros uh, in this location. Otherwise, we have defined variables uh, to store dimensions and uh, number of non-zeros. Uh, following row major order means first uh, uh, elements in the first row and the second row, and then uh, in this way, uh, let's fill in the table together. The first non-zero is 12, its row index is one, column index is two, and value is 12. Next one, uh, row index is one, column index three, value is nine. Following this major, uh, major order, next is minus three, row index three, one, value minus three, and the next one, row three, column, uh, its value is 14. Next one, and then 18. 
filled in this location, and then 15. And the last one, it's row index is 6, column index 4, its value is uh, minus 7. This is a compression method for a sparse matrix in triple list. Actually, non-zero elements are stored uh, in this list. Uh, its row in indices are in ascending order. And for elements in the same row, column indices are also in ascending order. The second sequential compression method is called row link sequential list. Uh, in the definition of triple list, we add a definition of a array. Elements in this array uh, is used to indicate projection of the first non-zero elements in each row. Uh, let's have a look at its representation. Uh, the same example, this is the triple list we have filled in together. And in this uh, compression method, we define uh, one dimensional array, R uh, row projection. Size of this array is determined by uh, the number of rows of the sparse matrix uh, because it has three rows. So uh, the size of this array is seven. Usually uh, cell zero is unused or we can store number of uh, rows in this uh, projection. And then the following, we have six elements to indicate uh, the first non-zero uh, elements uh, in each row. Uh, we can see the first non-zero in the first row is 12. Its projection must be one. So in this cell, we store one. And in the second cell, uh, it should be stored the uh, first non-zero elements in the second row. But we see we have no non-zero entries in the second uh, row. Then uh, it points to uh, the first non-zero in next row. The first non-zero in the third row is minus three, and its index uh, is three. So uh, in this cell, uh, we store three and. Uh, uh, in this cell, it also points to this projection. If uh, two adjacent uh, elements uh, points to a same projection, then, then we can judge there is no non-zero entries uh, in the second row. Also, we can calculate uh, by subtraction the adjacent uh, value of these two elements, and then we can say for sure uh, we have three minus one is two. We can say there are two non-zero entries in the first row. Similarly, let's fill in the uh, next, uh, the following uh, elements. Uh, in this cell, uh, it's projection of the first non-zero uh, in the fourth row, uh, 24, and its projection is five. five. So file is start here. And the next one, first projection of first non-zero uh, in the fifth row, 18, and its projection is six. Uh, next, uh, uh, 15th projection, seven, start in this element. Uh, from the definition of row projection, uh, we can derive a formula. Uh, the projection uh, of the first non-zero in the first row, uh, its projection must be one. And the projection of the first non-zero in the ith uh, row can be calculated by uh, first uh, non-zero element projection plus number of non-zeros non uh, in row i minus one.
we can derive this formula to calculate. Uh, in this uh, method, uh, one problem is uh, in triple list, the White House stored enough uh, information uh, to uh, represent this sparse matrix. Then if we add another array, that will result in redundant information. Actually, uh, in this kind of compression, the first column of triple list can be omitted. Uh, in this way, uh, it is called a row link to couple list. It's this kind of compression method uh, can express uh, all the information for a sparse matrix. Uh, let's check. For example, we are given a row link to couple list like this. Can we determine uniquely a sparse matrix? Uh, if we can, then, then we can say the information uh, is enough. Uh, let's see from uh, the information in the first uh, cell, we have uh, five rows, uh, six columns, and totally we have six non-zero entries. So the sparse matrix dimension is five times six, five rows and six co columns. And then uh, the first uh, element uh, in the first, uh, first non-zero in the first row is uh, column index is one and its value is five. So we can write it uh, to its position. And then by subtraction, these two values, we can judge. We have three non-zeros in the first row. So this uh, non-zero, its row index is four and its value is four. We can write here in the fourth column. And the next uh, row, uh, column index is six, value eight, we can write here. All the other elements are zeros. Next, uh, the first the projection of the first non-zero in the second row, uh, its column index is three, and its value is three. So we can put it here, and then by subtraction of these two value, we know there is only one non-zero in the second row. All the others are zero. Uh, go on, uh, projection of the first non-zero in the third row, its column index is four, value is seven. So put it in its right place. And then by subtraction, we can judge there is only uh, one non-zeros uh, in the third row. So all the other elements are zeros. Uh, next, uh, by subtraction uh, of these two adjacent uh, elements, we can uh, judge there is no uh, non-zeros in the fourth row. And then for the last row, uh, uh, its uh, column index is one and the value is six. Uh, all the other elements are zero. So from this uh, compression method of rolling tuple cast, uh, we can uh, determine uniquely this sparse matrix. So information in this uh, representation is unique. Uh, it's, uh, it can be used for uh, a sparse matrix uh, compression. Next, let's discuss how to comprise a sparse matrix in a linked representation. Usually, we have two methods. The idea of the first method uh, is for non-zero elements of each row, uh, we start in a linked list, singly linked list. And then we define a pointer array as head pointer to point uh, first non-zero in each row. For elements uh, in 
a singly linked list, we define uh, three data items. First is column index and uh, non-zero element value. And then uh, in a singly linked list, we define a pointer right uh, to point the next non-zero in the same row right to it. And then we declare a pointer array uh, as head pointer to points first elements in each row. Let's have a look at an example. This is a sparse matrix with five rows and five columns. So for pointer array, uh, we define uh, a, a, a pointer array with five elements. Each one is a height pointer. Uh, in the first row, we have two non-zero entries. And the first one is column index is one. And the second non-zero is column index is five. And here in this uh, field, start its value. And then its height pointer points two. Height pointer points to the first non-zero in the first row. And its right pointer points, points to uh, next non-zero, right to it. Uh, in the same row, because this is the last non-zero element. So in its right field, uh, we define a null pointer. Similarly, in the second row, we have only one non-zero. Uh, its uh, column index is three, so its height pointer points to eight. And then let's fill in the uh, representation together. In the third row, we have two non-zeros uh, and height points to points to the first. Uh, each, uh, uh, each row, we use a singly linked list to uh, link all the non-zero elements together. Uh, in the fourth row, we have no non-zero elements at all. So uh, we assign a null pointer uh, in the height pointer. And in the last row, we have only one non-zeros. In this kind of uh, representation, uh, we can see uh, it is uh, efficient to step through all the elements of a row, but it is a little bit difficult or expensive to step through all the elements of a column, for example, if we want to determine how many elements, non-zero elements in the second column, we have to traverse all the singly, links, singly link, uh, linked list and uh, uh, check its column index. Uh, if its column index is two, uh, then this is a non-zero entry in the second column. So this is a little uh, expensive compared uh, with to search or locate elements in the uh, same uh, same row. Uh, clearly, we could uh, define a kind of uh, representation to link uh, non-zero elements in the same column instead of rows. Uh, next uh, idea is why not both? So next, the uh, uh, compression method, uh, linked representation, is called orthogonal list. It is also called cross list or multi lists. Uh, we build a singly linked list to store non-zero elements in each row and uh, in each column. Then for element uh, for non-zero elements. We declare file data items. Uh, this is its row index, column index, and this one is for the value of uh, the non-zeros. And for each element, we declare two pointer field. Uh, right pointer points to uh, non-zero elements in the same row, right to it, and down points to non-zero elements in the same column, 
down to it. And then for the sparse matrix, we declare two pointer arrays uh, as a height pointer points to the first non-zero in each row uh, and also in each column. Uh, let's have a look at an example. This is a sparse matrix. Uh, its row dimension is four and the column dimension is three. So we define two pointer arrays. A row pointer array has uh, four elements and the column pointer array has three elements. And in this matrix, totally we have four non-zeros. Uh, and first uh, we draw all the non-zero elements together. Next, next uh, let's link the non-zeros uh, together uh, in each row and then in each column. First, uh, the first row pointer, height pointer, points to the first non-zero in the first row. It points three because in the first row, we have no other uh, non-zeros right to it. So in its right field, we uh, define a null pointer. And in the second row, its height pointer points to the first one. And its right pointer points to uh, the next non-zero after it. No other non-zeros. So in right pointer field, we define a null. In the third row, we have no uh, non-zeros. So uh, in this field, height pointer, uh, we define a null. And finally, in the fourth row, only one non-zero points to it. Right field, null. So far, all the uh, non-zero entries in the same row has been linked together. And then uh, let's link the column. In the first column, we have two non-zero. Uh, height point, pointer points to the first one, and its down field points to non-zero in the first column down to eight. Uh, down to eight, no other non-zero. So uh, in this down field of, of this node, we define a null pointer. Similarly, uh, the second height pointer points to the first non-zero in the second column. It's down field, a null. And then uh, it put the third column, we have only one non-zero, no other. So down field, a uh, null pointer. For each non-zero element, we can locate it in its uh, row link. And also we can locate it uh, in its column singly uh, linked list. So it is called uh, an orthogonal list or cross list or multi list. Before we finish this part, uh, let's have a look at an example of multi list or cross list. The problem is students uh, registration problem. Suppose uh, we have 40,000 students and 20 hundred courses uh, open for the students. The task is to print the registration for each course and also print the registered classes list for each student. The first representation method is to define statically a two-dimensional array uh, each row to represent a student and each column to represent a course. Then uh, if a student I register is registered for course J uh, at that position, uh, we store a one. Otherwise, we store a zero. Uh, this is not a good representation, uh, we can say for sure, because uh, in this two-dimensional uh, array, most of the elements are zeros. It will result in a uh, waste of computer's storage uh, memory.
So next uh, representation uh, is to define uh, a multi-list or a cross list. Uh, for example, for each column, uh, we link uh, all the courses one student registered, and then for each for each row, we link all the students registered for the course, and then uh, we can use a singly linked list or a circular linked list to link the course together. And then for each row, we can link all the students registered in this course. Compared with uh, the uh, first uh, representation method, this one is much better. Uh, so uh, it's an example of multi-list, uh, and it is a useful way to uh, comprise a, multi, uh, a, a sparse matrix. Uh, 